Welcome to Soltron. I got this figure a couple of days ago, so I figured I would just go through all the fixes I had to do to make this figure kind of like passable. Um, it has a lot of problems. So let's start with like the first problem. So my copy um, has like this backpack strap. And then the other one is the same left strap. So this is actually the wrong piece. Um, thankfully, BBTS said they would replace it for me, but I already started modding this figure, so I don't think that's going to be an option. But um, really dumb manufacturing error, uh, pretty annoying. So I'm going to have to fix that on my copy. I doubt anyone else is going to have that issue. So let's go just step by step all the different fixes I did. So one thing that was kind of an easy level fix was I added styrene to the back of his head antenna because they were just really thin pieces of plastic. So here's the kind of styrene I use. So it's pretty a thick, I don't know, maybe that's an, uh, maybe like a 10th of an inch, something like that, maybe one one millimeter, but it's decent. It's got a decent thickness to it. And this is actually how thick the plastic of his antenna were that I was actually able to bend them by touching them. And you can see they still, they have a little bit of give, but now that these have been glued onto the back, it's actually much better. So I just got a piece of paper. I traced his head antenna, cut it out on the paper. And then I just cut it out with a hobby knife on this and glued it onto these because they, these are just really thin pieces of plastic that seem like they were going to be prone to breaking. So that was step number one. Another thing I had to do was trim the bottom of his little head antenna. I had to trim the bottom of his head antenna because they would run into the like these little shoulder plastic. So his head actually could not look down a little bit. His head was like permanently looking up because there was just some extra plastic on like these earlobes, basically. So I had to get an X-Acto knife. I just used regular hobby knife and just trim that up. And then after I put the styrene on here, I cleaned it up a little bit for all the little extra bits sticking out. So that was like a first very easy thing to do. Another thing I had to fix was his head was very tight out of the package. Now it turns very easy and gently. So let's take off his backpack. And that was a really easy fix too. Um, it's probably one of the first things you should do. I just got a Q-tip and I put some petroleum jelly right there. So now his head's got a nice swivel to it. And I think that was definitely a necessary step because this hinge is already starting to develop some stress marks. So I think if I kept turning it without putting that lube in there, I think um, his head probably would have it this crack would have eventually cracked off and the whole head assembly would have been ruined. So that's like a, another first step you should do right away. Even if you don't like to customize, that's something really simple, a very easy fix. And actually let's look at his backpack. So initially his backpack had some plastic here on top, which just let these straps go 90 degrees. And you can see when you're putting this on his back, that's that's a problem because you have to like peg it into his back and then you have to yank this up and stretch the plastic for it to get into the proper place. So it pegs into these two holes in the back here. And then normally right now this would this would not be able to move up at all because there's plastic blocking it. But I made it so these straps can actually go up. So then this can just nicely situate down and go over his shoulders. Same with this side. Um, I don't know if I'll ever get a replacement for this, but but having these straps go up, like the original figure just makes this a lot more easy to apply. I have no idea why this is so badly engineered. Like as soon as you try to put this thing on, you're going to have some big problems because there's this plastic blocking it. It's hooked around like this and there's just no way to peg this into his back and hook this over his shoulders. It's just very badly designed. And all you have to do is just clear out some of this plastic and now it can move up. And now it can just go very easily, just peg into his back. And then the strap comes down just like the original figure, no problem. So 
the original originally it was like this and you'd have to like flex the plastic and yank this off of his back and there's just no good way to do it and these things already look like they're already kind of a thin kind of black plastic there's a good chance the more you yank this the wrong direction you might break it off so let's keep going with this backpack so that's one fix i recommend you do right away is you just get your hobby knife and you just trim all that out or better yet you unscrew this there's four screws on each side but i got kind of tired of undoing those screws over and over again so another tool that i use is this is my like standard screwdriver i use all the time and then the other tools i think you should get to like do these fixes is i'm using some foam this is probably not the best the best tool and i'll show you what i'm using this for in a second and then uh, this is my go-to gorilla glue so this is a really good one it doesn't really make a mess it doesn't tend to frost the plastic or make it brittle so that's very nice and then a new tool i just discovered i've been buying these acrylic five millimeter posts so these are pretty good they can actually be held by regular transformers so they can be used for like replacements for like weapon posts and things like that so they're almost exactly the right length this might need a little bit of thickening up but it's pretty much standard five millimeter which is very nice and then to trim these i usually just use my ply needle nose pliers and i just go around until the whole thing becomes brittle and it just breaks right off so not too difficult to work with in size to the correct size you need it and it's pretty pretty durable so I, I really like these I used to use party straws but those are really hard to get and those have a lot of variance on how thick they'll be and plus those are a little bit more flexible I like that this is really hard and it's not going anywhere all right so I'm just gonna go ahead and unscrew all these screws okay it's all unscrewed so we'll just lift this piece off and then you can see that these are held in by pins. You can just get on the other side here. And there's like a very small, you can kind of see the exit hole right there. You just put like a nail or something and then just pop these pins out and be careful with this tab here. But you can just pop the pin out and that'll let you shave off this plastic so that these straps can move up. And then let's look at the ratchets on the inside of this. So the problem here is that this this plastic is really soft. So this is this is like the, the problem with all the ratchets on this figure almost, is that this plastic is really soft. You can even see where like the original ratchet had caused like deformation and was destroying this cog. So it's pretty much in your best interest to just take the ratchets out because the ratchets just um, destroy this plastic because it's too soft. So this is where I just cut little pieces of foam. So that's these pieces here. So I just cut pieces off with scissors and just shove them in there to make some friction. And now these are friction joints. And the original plastic ratchets, um, I actually had to throw away because this gear just mashed it all into nothing. So um, these ratchets are just not going to work. You might as well just take them out right away and replace them with some friction. All right, and there's not quite enough friction as I like, so I'm gonna put in a little bit more of this EVA foam. You could probably just get like craft store $1 foam sheets and just keep jamming it in there until you have a good amount of friction. And then you just shove that in. And then we're just gonna put the cover back on and screw everything into place. Okay, so now I've screwed that back into place and you've got fairly decent friction joints, um, not my favorite thing. They feel a little bit weird because there's foam in there. Uh, ratchets would be better, but they were just really poorly manufactured. The problem was the ratchet, um, ratchets need to like flex a little bit while the cog is moving past them. So the tooth needs to be able to flex. And the way this was designed was there was just no space for the tooth to flex. The tooth and the cog would just grind each other down really bad design anyway that's it for the for the backpack all these other joints these other ratchets seem to be in pretty good shape i'm not having any issues with them they they actually feel pretty good so i'm not too worried about it 
one kind of annoying thing about this backpack is I don't know why they didn't just connect this to this, like the original figure. I don't know why all this extra movement seems kind of pointless, but oh well, let's move on. So let's move on to actually his his leg extensions. So I'm just going to take those right off. I had to do uh, quite a bit of modding on this, which is kind of annoying. So I, I felt like there was some definite issues with these. So first thing I wanted to do was I put one of those little acrylic rods in there where the screw hole is. So I had to widen it a little bit. And now these two parts can peg together, which is very nice. I like the way that feels better. So these peg together pretty much perfectly. Um, that's a really easy thing to do. But on most of these, the cannons, when you put it into the truck mode, the cannons actually face like this. So you're forced to have the cannons on top and the screws exposed the whole time. I don't know why they designed it that way. It should obviously be designed like the original toy where all the screw holes are concealed and then you have this, this joint here so that in vehicle mode, the cannons can fold down like this. I don't know why they did this. This is just also really bad engineering for no reason. So to enable it to do that, I had to cut out more grooves back here and that allows the wing section to just peg in normally right there. We're all good. And now I can have this in the regular vehicle mode. Again, I don't know why they disabled that. It was very pointless. And then another thing you have to do is this outside heel is a little bit wider than the inside heel. So you are gonna have to Dremel down and sand this. It's pretty much one millimeter. It's hardly any difference at all. So I had to take off like one millimeter of plastic here. You can see it's a little rough. I don't really care about polish that much. But on the upside, I now have like this whole wheel section. You can see now I have the regular trailer mode and these cannons can now point forward instead of being on top, they can now be on the side, which is how it was designed. I don't know why they changed that. So you can see everything looks pretty good. And then the nice thing is these little tabs are symmetrical, so it do doesn't matter that these are now switched around. It doesn't make any difference. You can just plug it into Prime for vehicle mode and it won't make a difference. And now I got like his battle trailer is pretty much enabled. And now that these can like aim upwards. So you've got this look, which sort of works, I guess. Yeah, there you go. Now you got his battle station mode. Oh, that works fairly well. Everything's like kind of long and lanky, but now these cannons can actually point up. So I think that helps to look a lot. And then one more thing I might as well go over while I have him out is you could see there's like some places where the glue was frosting. That usually happens when you cover something or they probably glued this and then threw it in the box. And that's why there's now super glue frosting. And for that same thing, you just get a Q-tip, some Vaseline, and you can just rub that right on the frosted areas and that will pretty much clean it up. Now it's all glossy. You can't really see the frosting at all. And mine, my figure had a couple different places where the glue was like that and just frosted over the plastic. And now it looks like the frosting's not even there. That pretty much takes care of it. So that's it. Easy little fix. Okay, let's go back to the main figure. So I didn't really have to do much for the legs. Um, one problem I was having was these thigh swivels were just pure trash. They were, they were almost impossible to turn. It felt like the whole thing was gonna shear off and break. So that's a really easy fix. You only need to remove one screw. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Took that screw out. And one thing I wanna point out about the instructions, which is really cool, is they actually show you what all the different assemblies look like. So you can kind of like make your own repairs if you have to, but it's really cool that they do that. So they show you all the internal structures. And then we're just gonna take this cover off and there you can see exactly what was in the instructions. 
you get this whole assembly. And then you can see that little toothed piece just fell out. So that's this little piece here. This has all the teeth. This has all the teeth. Um, you can see there's, geez, are there even any teeth left on this thing? I, I actually shaved down the teeth. I think there were four. There was like one here, 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 and here. So like here, 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 and here. So I just got my hobby knife and I just trimmed those teeth down a little bit, actually a lot. So they're not really much teeth left. And that just barely lets the teeth grab this cog here as it's turning. Well, actually, maybe the teeth are, maybe these count as teeth too, because there's still a good amount of grip on this. Like as I'm turning it, you can hear the ratchets are still working. So the thing with thigh swivel and bicep swivel is you actually don't really need ratchets on these swivels, they're not that important for stability. And then basically this piece is just going to attach again right here. Maybe I had that upside down, like right there. And then this just slides basically right in there. So after you trim up the teeth, you can just reassemble this, put the back cover back on, test it out. And now it swivels much better. Again, I might have gone a little crazy with trimming that, but again, the the thigh swivel doesn't really matter, so who cares? It's As long as it's not super loose, it's, as long as it has a little bit of friction, thigh swivels are really not that big a deal. And then same thing here, same fix. So this one I trimmed a little bit more. This one I was a little bit safer with and I didn't trim that much off. So that's a really easy fix. The hips on mine are pretty good. I didn't have to do anything with this. And the back clicks also sound good. Nothing was really slipping out of place. So I didn't feel the need to like undo this, but it's probably the same deal. The whole issue with this figure is just those soft gray little ratchet pieces are all just too soft. So let's do another fix that I think is kind of special because most people didn't bother with this. Um, the wrists are actually ratcheted and can swivel pretty much 180 degrees. So he's actually got wrist articulation, but when you get your figure, yours, your wrist is not going to move at all. And that's because behind the fist, there's going to be all this plastic garbage that's kind of in the way. So of course we have to unscrew the forearm. Oh, and while I'm unscrewing this, I might as well mention the other issue that this figure has is there's like a little gap right here so that the forearms are actually loose and wobble like this when you assemble it. So I'm going to go ahead. So now it's been unscrewed. So this piece will just come right off and the spring is pretty much attached to this. You can yank it out. It's just in there with friction, but you get your two halves of the arm and you can see they, the ratchets on this are decent because they actually used metal ratchets instead of the garbage plastic ones they've been using. So these ratchets actually hold up a little bit better, though they do feel kind of weird rubbing against each other, but I'd rather have that than the garbage that kind of just falls apart. So you can see I just cut a piece of styrene. It's the same as this. I kind of just eyeballed it. I didn't even use a piece of paper and I cut a hole in the middle so that the styrene can go there and it gives a little bit more of a filler. So now his, his, um, Forearms are not wiggly at all. He, he actually cannot move them from side to side. So there's no wiggle there. So that's all been pretty much fixed up. So then if we take out the fist and you can see here's another one of those ratchet joints. So it's got whatever this piece is, this ring, and then it's got the little cog inside. And this is small enough that I'm not too worried about it. This is actually pretty well built. The plastic is not really getting flexed or anything. And you can see there was all this structural extra plastic so i had to cut all that off and you can also pull out this piece too i wonder when they were designing it if they actually made it so that this piece was supposed to slide up a little bit to give the arms the freedom but it definitely does not work that way that might have been a feature they removed and there was a screw here i just cut everything out so i just used my hobby knife cut everything because the plastic on this figure is actually kind of cheap 
So you can actually cut a lot of it with just a hobby knife pretty easily. And then I just glued this back in place instead of using that screw. And now there's enough clearance when I put the hand back in that the hand can just rotate freely in all directions because earlier the, all that structure plastic just gets in the way. So kind of stupid. Um, yeah, that structure plastic's not even that necessary. This is not a piece that's like prone to breaking. So I don't know why. Just really dumb choices made with this figure. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and reassemble that and then shove the spring back in. And if you feel like the spring is too tight, you can always trim the spring a little bit. And that's like the next fix we'll talk about for this double joint here. And while we're talking about his arm, yes, I had to replace all the fingers. Um, all of them just broke off. As soon as I moved them, they just came apart. It was ridiculous. It was like the cheapest KO toy I've ever felt in my life where I just, just moving something made the whole thing come apart. The thumbs actually held up pretty good. The thumbs are still in good shape. They're not really prone to breaking, so you probably don't even need to bother replacing the thumbs. But everything else, yeah, just disintegrated. Literally every single finger just fell apart. It was very annoying. And the way you fix the fingers is you just kind of yank out, just same direction the fingers are pointing. You just yank it out. There's these tiny little ball joints. One of mine, the ball joint actually broke in the socket. And that's kind of my fault because I was playing with it when I should have just replaced the fingers immediately. So if you do get this figure for some reason, which I wouldn't recommend, um, definitely switch out the fingers immediately. Otherwise, you might end up with one of the ball joints stuck inside the socket, which is a real hassle. I had, to, I had to cut it out using my hobby knife, of course. So the next problem you're gonna have with this figure is that the second bicep joint will not bend out of package. So mine works perfectly now, but it just won't bend. I, I didn't even know that this was a joint until I took it apart and looked at it because it's, it's just gonna refuse to move. And the problem with this part is that the spring inside is is too long so you actually need to shorten the spring or replace it so you just go ahead and unscrew this and then there is a spring in here so you got to be careful that that doesn't just shoot out so there's the spring you can see mine is like really rough at the end because i just used a pair of pliers these same pliers actually and i just used the the trimming bit right there and i just cut off a little bit of the coil of this spring because if you tighten this all the way, this this is just too tight. The spring will just be mashed all the way in there and it'll just basically fuse the metal so that these gears, which again are the metal kind, so not the cheap plastic ones, so that these gears just don't have any space. The spring is so long that the gears are just be smashed together and they they just don't have any room to flex against each other. So that's a pretty easy fix. And then that enables his bicep swivel. His bicep double joint, I mean. And then you just reattach all that, screw everything back together. And then you're probably gonna have to test fit it a couple times. If you're too lazy to do this, which I don't blame you, um, you could actually just loosen these screws in his bicep and you're going to have like an ugly gap right here, but um, that gives the spring enough room to move out a little bit at least. And then the teeth will not be grinding against each other. So all you have to do is actually just unscrew this a little bit and give it some space. And that will, that will give, give it enough room so that this can bend normally but you can see that's been fixed. And then so is this side. Otherwise, um, yeah, you're gonna wear down those, those gears, which is definitely not worth it. Nothing really had to be fixed in this area. He's all good there. So that just brings us to, I think, the last fix I had to do, which is the pretty standard one. If you've read anything about this figure, you already know about this fix. That's pretty necessary as we open up these joints back here I thought it was this, um, well, actually, I take that back. There is one more thing I had to do. So it is with these shoulder joints. 
So this is another extra fix because the lateral movement on these was very tight. So I had to unscrew these and it was the same issue with the, the second elbow joint is the spring was just too long and had to be trimmed again. So you're just going to open this up and then you just, you want to hold this down as you're unscrewing it to make sure you're not stripping the plastic or breaking a post by accident. And then this is just going to explode because there's a spring in here. And then you can see it's the same assembly. This spring is pushing these two together. The spring is just a little bit too long. So all you have to do is just take the spring out. And then you're just going to use some wire cutters, something to just trim a little bit of the spring off. And then this is like a sharp part. So you want this pointed at the metal, the metal gears. metal gear um and then you're just going to put that back in there so now it's it's loose enough that he can raise his arms laterally and there's just feels nice and good again this is not a very important joint so if you go a little bit too loose it's really not the end of the world um as long as his arms not just flopping by the side so nice and tight his arms fine he's not really holding anything anyway so it doesn't matter and then let's go to our final fix, which is the one that's most documented. Um, as soon as I got this figure, like the second I turned the shoulder, the whole thing just kind of fell apart and it just became a friction joint pretty much immediately. Um, the right shoulder is actually better than the left shoulder. And there's a reason for that. When you take this apart, you're going to see. When you go in here, you get the same garbage kind of ring and then this is soft, but because there's space, there's space for this to flex, the tooth doesn't just chew up, doesn't just chew up the gear this time. So this gear is actually in good shape. And then you get this kind of O-ring and it's, I think it's broken, but this might actually be a feature. I don't know. This is actually helpful that it does this. And same thing, you just, um, these, I didn't trim these down. This one has four. And then in the other shoulder, it had like six. So I just cut three of them out of this shoulder. And now this shoulder is working okay. It had too many teeth. So I don't know why it's asymmetrical. It's very weird. And then if you've been looking at the forums and everything, you know, you basically, you just take this screw out. You take this gear off. You put some glue around it. You can see there's some excess glue that spilled out. You got to be very careful to clean up all this little glue on the stem. And then you just screw this back together and now this gear won't move. That was kind of the issue is that this gear was just sliding all the way around. And actually, I'll, I'll take this apart because there is something I want to show you. No, actually, no, I won't. Okay. Um, this has now been screwed in or glued into place. So this, even the screw is not coming out at this point. So it's actually nice and sturdy. But, um, the gear was actually designed well. People are saying that it was like a stupid design to screw this onto the post. And it's actually not a stupid design. That's what most transformers do. Um, I've taken apart a lot of transformers. It's pretty common to screw the gear onto a post. Um, and the gear was, I don't know how to describe this. The gear was keyed in a special way where it did have tabs that were supposed to prevent the gear from sliding around. It's just the tabs were too small and the tabs shear off pretty much immediately. But when you take it apart yourself, you're going to see that the gear is actually specially shaped so that it's not supposed to rotate. The problem again is just that the gear is so soft that it ends up deforming and rotating anyway. Um, and that's just because of the type of plastic that was used. So I hope if another third party company steals this idea or if this company does a second release um it would be pretty easy to fix you really just got to do better plastic on the ratchets the plastic that they use is just trash just like the plastic for the fingers was kind of trash and that just causes pretty much all the issues for this figure if they just fix that and then fix the tolerances so things can actually rotate and move like they're supposed to um 
it's a pretty easy fix. Of course, you could do all this yourself like I just did, but if you're not into customizing, I definitely don't recommend it. It's kind of a waste of time. You should just loosen up this bicep. You definitely need to glue the shoulder ratchets. That's important. Um, you might as well just let the backpack ratchets just fail and turn into friction joints. And then you absolutely have to fix the thigh swivel joint. Otherwise, don't even bother using the thigh swivel. It's just not going to work. You're going to do more damage than, than fixing it. So you have to absolutely change those joints out. All right, so this is already a long video, but I figured I'd just take a minute and we'll just go over the batteries real fast. Um, so this guy... My copy didn't come with any batteries. I think that's probably normal. So the matrix does light up. Uh, my batteries are still in the mail, so I can't show that. Hopefully they'll arrive tomorrow. But basically, one of these sides will just open up. All that's holding it in place is friction. You're just going to use your nail, pry it apart. And then you can see the battery compartments down here. And then you got all the circuit board up here and the LED. So that's, that's nice and easy to get to, and you just slide it back on, and now it just holds in with friction. So it's a pretty easy fix. These take CR927s, so make sure you have those ordered if you're planning on getting this figure for some reason. And then for the, for the gun, let's get him out of the way. For the gun, you're just going to gently pull off the nozzle here. And then you can see same battery compartment, same thing. You're just going to gently push this. And you don't need to worry too much about these LED wires. You just have to be careful not to break them off, but then you're just going to push that back on. Everything's good there. And then finally for the laser cannon, you just open this up and then same thing. You're just going to pull this open and then you got this whole long assembly with all the LEDs. And then you're going to put in the two batteries there. Carefully slide this back in place. You should probably keep track of which side it was facing, but it's probably probably symmetrical, so it probably doesn't matter. And then mine's got like some red paint garbage right there. And then that's just going to slide back on. So really easy battery replacement. So that's that's nice. But with all these fixes, I'm now satisfied with this figure but uh, I still think it's kind of a ripoff for $200. I hope they make a second release. Uh, I would really actually like a figure that does not have all this die cast because it does make him kind of a hassle to play with. I would actually prefer a stripped down version uh, that does not have the die cast and has fixed ratchets. And I would actually be okay with a figure that doesn't even have like all these articulated fingers. I find these kind of pointless and just fiddly and annoying. I think it's more trouble than it's worth. But anyway, I hope that helps somebody out. Uh, if you're planning on getting this figure, just keep in mind, this is all the maintenance you're going to have to do um, unless there's like a, a fix upcoming. All right, and I'll see you in the next one.